Hey guys, Theron Asbury here with Revital Outdoors bringing you another exciting podcast. Tonight we're going back to Lake Pickwick. We have Mr. Denny Patterson. Denny got fifth place last year at the Major League Fishing BFL event for the uh, Choo Choo Division. So we're very excited to have him on and talk to him this evening. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. That way you're notified when all of our content is dropping and we have a lot of great content dropping in the near future also check us out on our social media platforms that's going to be facebook and instagram and then if you've never heard of revital outdoors we are a premium cbd company for all the outdoor enthusiasts whether you're a hunting or fishing enthusiast we have products for you to help you with uh, inflammation relief back and uh, shoulder uh, sorenesses or aches if you have trouble sleeping at night or any of those elements at all, please check out our products. We're THC free, made right here in America. We're also accepting pro staff daily. So if you're an avid outdoor enthusiast, please uh, consider being a part of our uh, Revital Outdoors family and applying for that pro staff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this podcast. Mr. Denny Patterson, how are you doing this evening, bud? I'm doing good. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you coming on board and uh, having time to talk to us. So fifth place last year, top five, Lake Pickwick. Denny, I'm going to be honest with you. I looked you up on your uh, on your uh, on Major League Fishing and you've got a very good success record on Lake Pickwick. So talk to us about Lake Pickwick. You know, how do you break it down? What what helped you get fifth place last year? Well, I went and uh, started off trying to fish up towards Coger's Island up in that area that way. And- there were so many boats up there, like 45 boats in one area. And I'm like, I'm not dealing with this. I got to go find my own thing. Mm-hmm. So I left there and went to some places and I found some ledges with a uh, 13, 16 foot deep. And I slow rolled a spinner bait on them. And right. uh, I caught like seven bass and they weighed 17, six, something like that. Okay, so we'll talk to us a little bit about that. Were you running the bank, or were you relating to one little area where you went, or what was holding those fish? It's just a rock ledge. Uh, okay. It's a uh, it's rock, rock, rock ledge close to deep water. Okay. And uh, they were moving in there, working their way into spawn, kind of like uh, at Congress Island where they was catching all of them. They were moving into spawn. They caught some big fish. So you were catching some pre-spawn staging fish then? Correct. Okay. Were you catching all largemouth or was there a mixed bag or what were you targeting? Everything I was targeting was largemouth. Uh, okay. I wasn't targeting, targeting any smallmouth. I know they caught some big smallmouth in the tournament. One guy come in with three smallmouth that weighed close to 18 pounds. Wow. So, um, were you catching all your fish on that spinner bait or were there other Every baits fish you mixed I in? Got on the bait. Okay. Well now you're kind of speaking my language because originally I'm from Oklahoma and I'm an Oklahoma boy at heart and I love a spinner bait. There's been a guy over there with this big blonde hair named Jimmy Houston. He kind of made the spinner bait famous as well as this other guy. I think he fished the elite series his name, Jason Christie. He throws a spinner bait a little bit. So now you've got my uh, like undivided attention. Talk to us about your spinnerbait game. Like I know it's different from all, all anglers, but I want to know what Denny Patterson throws in a spinnerbait. Well, I just throw an old Stanley Wedge spinnerbait that you can't get anymore. And that is old school. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, that's I, old school. Holy cow! <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't fished in in thirteen years, and everybody said I had a. Uh, tackle store I had so much tackle and wasn't doing no fishing. I stopped fishing because uh, to raise to take my daughter all over the place to play softball. And uh, some buddies of mine got talked to me and says, You can win Anger of the Year in, uh, uh, in the schedule on the BFL. And I was like, Ah, nah, ain't no way. And they kept on and on. And I said, Okay, well, I'll enter. And sure enough, I was right. But it, it was pretty good kind of sweet to come back and not fish for 13 years and win hang of the year yeah but, good uh, for you that was the other thing i was going to bring up with this podcast you not only did you have a fifth place finish last year at pickwick you walked away angler of the year uh, that's a very hard accomplishment and to me winning an angler of the year title will carry an angler further in his career than anything else because that means you stayed consistent that also means you put in your homework and you just stayed confident in what you were doing throughout the year so denny congratulations on that but um, you know, thinking about the spinnerbait that you threw last year at, at Pickwick, um, maybe can you talk to us about maybe the blade combinations or the colors or what size it was it? I was, I was just 
it was uh, sartreuse and white, three quarter ounce, taking it in, uh, with the number five willow leaf on it and bumping the rocks down. Like I said, 13, 16 foot, slow rolling it down there. A lot of people don't do that anymore. No, bumping the rocks. I mean, that's something that a lot of people do with crankbaits. I know a lot of finesse anglers do it with uh, like maybe a wobble head or a shaky head, um, but they don't know about the, the uh, spinnerbait secret on bumping it against rocks. So we're kind of unveiling a little bit of secrets right now. Do you throw a, a trailer with your spinnerbait or a, a trailer hook? Not when I'm getting it way down there. I don't. I don't. I don't like putting a trailer on it. The trailer holds it up. If, if I was wanting to fish the grass and stuff like that, I'd put a trailer on it. But getting down deep. I don't like a trailer. Okay. I like the trailers. So were you you'd covering a lot of water or were you getting into areas such as, you know, main lake secondary points that maybe had some brush on them and some current breaks that you talked about that you knew had fish and you were graphing them and making repetitive casts or were you just blowing and going until you got your bites? I was just fishing a, a, an area about maybe 200 yards long, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the fish would move up on the ledge, and when they'd move up on the ledge, I'd catch them. So pretty much catching fish all day long. Uh, no, I caught them till about ten thirty, and, and uh, when the when the sun come out, it was over. I didn't get another bite at that place. You caught all your weight by ten thirty. Yes. Holy cow! That's that's a long wait from ten thirty to weigh in, and, and then you come out fifth place. So. I mean, did you think going into weigh in you had a shot at a top five or were you hoping to maybe catch that last kicker or just get some more bites? Because that's that's a long window without catching any fish. I kept telling myself if I could call two of them fish, I could win the tournament. Because I right. had two little fish, just barely over 15. And uh, I never could call them. I tried. Uh, it's just what happened was it was cloudy and it was foggy that morning. And then when all of it lifted, it was like, the fish shut down and I talked to a bunch of other people at the weigh in and they said the same thing I said that it shut down after the uh the fog lift lifted up okay so. okay so well let's say let's just go a little bit off kilter a little bit let's say the spinner bait wouldn't have worked would you have targeted the same fish and fished them a little bit differently or would you completely you know just scrap that and going for something different I would have threw a jig on them if they if they wouldn't bite the jig then I would have Started running bars on the river is what I okay. would have did. So, all right. Just out of curiosity, the fish you caught, what what depth range were they? I know you said they were kind of pre-spawning, but what depth range were they 13 they're to at? 16 feet. 13 to 16 feet. That's very dialed in. <laughs> That's very <laughs> dialed in. So, uh, And then how many keepers did you catch throughout the day? I caught eight keepers. That's what I kept I caught. Eight keepers by 1030, had the weight you had, walked away top five finish. So that's that's really cool. Now, thinking about in terms of this year, um, what do you think you're going to do differently? Are you going to do the same thing? Is the water t you know water level, water clarity just still the same? What's the weather pattern been this year? I mean, what do you suspect you're going to find this year on Lake Pickwick? Well, I know that that you can run the bars and catch them on the, on the, on the bars because I caught the big fish a couple of weeks ago in a winter tournament. It was 621 running bars, throwing rattle traps and stuff like that. Okay, okay. Well, you I, talked about you're kind of an old school angler. you got a lot of tackle in your tackle shop. That's awesome. Love to hear about that. But do you still have an Alabama rig on the deck? <laughs> I can't stand this thing. I'll rather throw my spinnerbait. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. You know, I, I, like I just. a brick. <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's you denny patterson for president 2024 that's yeah awesome i love it well you know you don't throw any a rigs so you keep it old school you catch them do you do you have nice electron i mean do you still upgrade on your electronics or are you just fishing history and this is just how i know how to catch fish on lake pickwick i was old school and some but i have good electronics on my boat but i had a team blazer and i uh sold it and I got a new boat to come in, but the electronics forward hasn't come in. I just got uh, one graph on the front and one on the back, and I was kind of calling the marine dealership to them, look, now, we need to get this <laughs> together. I got tournament coming this weekend, and then I have the Toyota Series coming up, and I said, you definitely have to have my graphs right for it. So Absolutely. I what used the graphs. You can't beat these boys without them graphs. 
No, you, you know, we're saying the same thing, in my opinion, about the graphs today that we were saying about the Alabama rig when it came out in 2011. If you're not throwing the Alabama rig back then, you were going to get beat. And today, I think it's transformed. If you don't have the forward-facing sonar and all the technology that's available today, you're going to get beat with it. That's true. Very true. So um, just out of curiosity, what division of Toyotas are you fishing this year? Central division. Central Division. So you're fixing to get ready to go to uh, Lake Gunnersville. Yeah, and I just I went over there last weekend in Goose Egg. So, ooh, <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully you can uh, find something between now and then. I know it's going to be a phenomenal tournament. There's gonna, there's a lot of boats in that tournament, so that'll be fun. But, um, you know, Denny, you gave us a lot of great insight for uh, Lake Pickwick. One last question. Let's talk about as a co angler. If a you know if you were fishing as this thing as a co angler, you could only bring three rods or maybe more, maybe less, uh, what would you bring as a co-anger to fish behind some of the guys that are fishing on Pickwick? Because I know they're running and gunning, throwing a lot of reaction bait. That's going to make it hard on the co-angler. So what is it they can do to try to change it up and get a few bites? I throw a rail trap, spinner bait, and a jig, and chatter bait. Okay. That's okay. it. And if, just throw out the back of the motor and fish a little deeper water and fish for your own fish. I mean, the fish are... It, if, if it, they're fishing the bars, the fish are scattered on them anyway. The co anger can catch them. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's kind of like fishing the grass down here in Florida. Just turn around and cast. You got plenty of opportunity behind you. Don't worry about what they're doing. Go for and do your thing. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Denny, you said it best. So, well, Denny, uh, to finish out this podcast, just give you an opportunity to thank any of your sponsors, anybody that supports you, local bait shops, whatever it may be, friends, family. I uh, just want to give you that opportunity to do that right now. Well, uh, I thank my wife for uh, allowing me to do this. She, uh, I got a bunch of rodeo bulls, and she feeds them while I'm gone. So, <laughs> right, I, I appreciate right. it. If it wasn't for her, I couldn't go do it. Absolutely, I know we talked on Facebook. You're a former uh, rodeo guy yourself, and, and did the rodeo circuit. I'm very excited to possibly get some products in your hand because I know you've uh, sustained some injuries from that, and it's nice to see you in, in bass fishing. But you didn't do any help on your body because. Riding a bull and then going to bass boat sometimes can be the same, especially on Lake Pickwick. You'd be surprised how many bones I broke riding bulls. <laughs> right. I, I, I probably don't even want to know, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> so, very very rough sport. So, well, Denny, we appreciate you having on, uh, being on with our podcast this evening. It's been an honor to talk to you. And uh, good luck to you this year in 2022. We wish you the best. Maybe you can defend that Angler of the Year title, go back out there and win this year on Pickwick. And uh, we just really appreciate you taking time to be on our podcast and wish you all the best of luck. Well, thank you for having me. Well, from all of us at Revital Outdoors, I'm Theron Asbury. You've been talking to Denny Patterson. He finished fifth last year in the Choose You Division BFL event on Lake Pickwick. So we're very, very excited to have him on board. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And then check us out on our website, revitaloutdoors.com. Again, thank you for everyone that tuned to this podcast. God bless. Be safe out there. And we will talk to you.